really serious issue that I've been seized with recently, as well as the leader of our party, Andrew Scheer, is the fact that we know that there are Canadians, so Canadian citizens or people that have a connection to Canada, that went abroad to fight as an ISIS terrorist. Most recently, we heard uh, that there is a Canadian who actually bragged on a New York Times podcast about the executions and killings that he undertook as an ISIS terrorist, and he's now back in Canada roaming free. Um, this is a really serious issue. Uh, ISIS committed genocide against a group of people called the Yazidis. You've heard me talk about this very often. The Yazidi community is an ethnic and religious minority in northern Iraq. Uh, they're indigenous to the area, and ISIS actually rounded up tens of thousands of these people, uh, shot the men, uh, put them in mass graves and in front of women, and women were separated. Tens of thousands of these women were actually sold like animals uh, in sex slave markets and given to ISIS terrorists as prizes. Sold dozens of times, raped hundreds of times, uh, multiple times a day by multiple men. Uh, and many of these women who have survived just, you know, they're incredible people who have survived a lot of trauma that need our support in so many different ways. But in one way that we really have to give them our support is bringing uh, people who were complicit in their genocide to justice. And that's actually an obligation of uh, any state that participates in the genocide convention is anybody who was complicit in genocide. So, you know, when you think about uh, people who, you know, even just these, these terrorists that turned a blind eye at these slave pens or that kept these women in captivity or that glorified this particular violence, all of them are owed, they're owed justice. Now, Prime Minister, uh, we've been raising this issue in the House of Commons, has uh, refused to acknowledge that this is something that he needs to do. Uh, we think that uh, anybody who is complicit in this should be brought to justice at the International Criminal Court. Um, in fact, one of the motions I raised in the House of Commons over two years ago actually required Canada to do this. So I've raised this in the House of Commons a couple of times this week, uh, so did my colleague James Bazan, but I want you to watch one particularly disturbing exchange that we had with the Prime Minister in this regard. Mr. Speaker, Nada is a young Yazidi mother from Iraq. When ISIS invaded her community, she was sold as a sex slave. She recently recovered coming face to face with, uh, with Abu Tafiq, the man she says sold her and bought her. He wasn't in jail, he wasn't in Iraq, He's a free man in London, Ontario. We need to believe victims and the letter Liberals let this guy into our country. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for allowing ISIS terrorists to walk our streets freely and finally send these war criminals to The Hague? Right on, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in regards to the Yazidis, our government has proven to be a global leader in welcoming refugees, and we've more than doubled Canada's refugee numbers. We've provided a new home to more than 1,300 women and their families who endured the brutality of Daesh, 85% of whom are Yazidi. Our government's commitment to supporting vulnerable women and girls is unwavering. We announced $20 million to expand our refugee program, specifically targeting women and girls. We will continue to expedite applications so that their family members can escape, who escaped Daesh can join their relatives in Canada. The Honourable Member for Calgary Nose Hill. After sitting with a Yazidi woman who survived sexual slavery, you leave awed by her strength, concerned for her welfare, and left with a deep, white-hot desire to bring her justice. When we wax eloquent about Me Too, we cannot forget our obligation to bring justice to women who have had their bodies used as tools of war. Why does this feminist Prime Minister continually refuse to commit to refer Canadian ISIS terrorists to the International Criminal Court? Honourable Prime Minister. Our security agencies take all potential threats very seriously and use the full toolkit of measures, including surveillance, the no-fly lists, revoking passports and laying criminal charges when sufficient evidence exists. We trust our police forces and intelligence services to do their work and to do it well. I find it actually troubling that the Conservatives seem to want elected officials to directly intervene with police officers and tell them who should be arrested and when they should be arrested. We will continue to trust those responsible for the safety of Canadians to do their jobs. The answer to the questions we asked is very simple. It should be yes. When there is evidence of somebody who 
you know, going to act as an agent of genocide. They should be brought to justice in the International Criminal Court. That's why these courts exist. That's why we pay uh, for their operation. That's why we are part of these treaties. It shouldn't take decades to bring these people to justice. And surely, you know, people who have bragged about being complicit in genocide should not be walking the streets of Canada free without as much as a peace bond. Um, you know, I, what I don't understand is is why it's so hard for this guy, for the Prime Minister, to stand up and just say, no, this is wrong. I mean, for somebody who, you know, the point I made in my question is like, you know, if you're going to talk about Me Too, like, what about women who have had their bodies used as tools of war? Where are we at on that? And we shouldn't be, you know, standing behind international bureaucracy. We should be standing up for principle. I, I think that's what a lot of Canadians, regardless of political stripe, would support. Um, sitting in a room with these women, what I said in that question, that's where my heart is at. Uh, you feel a white hot anger that anything so heinous and vile could happen to another human being. We need to get our act together on this. We shouldn't be funding poetry classes for reintegration for ISIS fighters. That shouldn't be our top priority. Our top priority should be bringing them to justice. Because when we bring people like that to justice, it sends a message to the world that we won't tolerate it and hopefully it will prevent these acts from occurring. Working hard for you. Have a great day.